curious about what the actual observations look like for you um, and, and kind of how you gather the information, like if there's certain strategies you use, or maybe you, you know, do you fill out the checklist during the observation? Do you wait and do it after? Just kind of the logistics of how that works for you. Um, I guess, Lisa, if you don't mind taking this one, getting us started. Yeah. So um, first, when I'm in the home, I definitely, if I'm in the home, I know we're virtual now, but if I'm in the home, I definitely explain to the family that I'm there to watch the therapist. So the family doesn't feel anxiety that their child is doing something or they're not doing a a good job. Um, And then I individualize it to every single observee. So it depends on, you know, where we are in the home, if we're outside, if we're inside, uh, because I try to be really uh, as invisible as possible. So for example, I I was in a home one time, but the child was uh, a bit shy. And since I was a new face, I sort of sat around the corner where they couldn't see me, but I could visually still see them. And I could uh, jot some notes down there um, because like Emily, I always write all over that fidelity tool in the sides, up and down, um, you know, wherever I can. And so um, you know, when we're debriefing, it's really more functional to that specific family and that specific observation. I think that's so such a good idea to take. I'm a note taker. I write every, that's the way I think, I think is by writing Mm -hmm. things down. So I can, it makes a lot of sense to me to take lots of notes so that your debrief can be smoother. I think that makes, that makes great sense. And I like the idea of letting the family know why you're there. Hopefully the practitioners let the family know why you're coming, but just to kind of soothe that because for the family, they might feel being like they're being observed too, Mm -hmm. just because they have somebody new in the home. Um, so Emily, I'm going to ask you, how, what do you do with the child during the observation? Because I can imagine you're trying to be invisible, <laughs> like Lisa, yeah. is, but the child's like new person, and unless they're really shy, maybe they're like, I want to play with you, which kind of changes the, the visit. So how does that work for you? Well, I typically don't write anything during a visit. That's kind okay. of always how I've been in EI. I'm really visual, so I replay it when I write my notes. And so I do the same thing with the fidelity because you kind of, you learn which questions are, you know, what questions are what. So just kind of check those things off in my mind as I go. So what I try to do is I try to sit back and be more like where the family is so that I'm more like a part of where the adults are. Um, Sometimes it depends on how that session is going, but um, sometimes when the kids come to me, I just try to reinforce what my provider is already doing so that I'm supporting what strategies they're already doing. Then I kind of lead them over to mom or dad and let their <laughs> grandma or grandpa or whoever, and let them kind of practice too. So I try to be a more like that. Like if it's feeding, you know, some of our providers, the child's in the high chair, cause that's what they're doing during that time. That's a little easier to be back and mm-hmm. um, be an observer, but it's hard for me not to play with a little kid <laughs> that's in front of me. So oh, and you know, you really, the provider. you can't ignore them. So you got to no. figure out where you fit in. And I think what, that strategy you gave of kind of being where the parents are, as opposed to maybe being on the provider end or, you know, mm-hmm. positioning yourself, being mindful of where you position yourself makes a lot of sense to me. How does it look for you, Kim, when you're doing your observations? So I've done um, in-person and virtual observations. Talking about in-person, um, I, I agree with Emily. I'm just, I've become part of the crowd there. Mm-hmm. And I follow the provider's lead or the parent's lead if the child's interacting with me and try and reinforce whatever they are trying to um, work on with the child. Um, I take, I'm a big note taker. I take tons of notes and I always have the checking, um, coaching in action checklist with me and then another sheet of paper because I will likely write on both. Mm -hmm. Um, And I let parents know that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Um, I rely on the provider to introduce uh, to the parent this idea of them being observed and Um, quality assurance and Mm -hmm. consistency across our system. Mm -hmm. Um, I reinforce that when I arrive and I'm available to answer questions. Often I'm introduced as this is um, my observer for today. And she's also a speech therapist. So um, after the visit, I would be happy. I'm always open to answering any questions or um, giving any impressions in a mentoring kind of um, context, if you will. So it's helpful to the provider in every way possible. Yeah, I like that. I like that where you kind of have the provider set the stage with the family a little bit, and then you just become one of the group. That makes a lot of sense to me. Is that any different, Kim, when you're doing the virtual observations? 
Um, yes. So there's the option to tune me out altogether. I can <laughs> shut off my video and my sound, which has been the preferred way. Um, my the people I've observed have let me know, you know, that 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 would be best. Um, I think it's a little bit more natural uh, for the family and the observe the people being observed if my camera is off less distracting definitely for the child, probably for the parent too. Um, so that's one big difference, but the structure of it all and the purpose of it all is still the same. I'm there to observe and look at and help the provider. I always come from a standpoint of, you know, this is a support to you. How lucky are you um, and me to get this feedback and input and help problem solve later any challenges? Yeah, I love that approach because it can be kind of isolating, right? Going from visit to visit to visit. You're, some people are, especially while people have been working from home, they don't have the opportunity to be with their colleagues. And sometimes not everybody has joint visits with other people to kind of off, you know, invite that kind of feedback. So that makes a lot of sense. And, and the tip about turning your camera off, I can understand how that could make make what you're seeing more natural because folks can kind of forget you're there. And you were, you were shaking your head, Bonnie, when she said that about it makes it more natural. Yeah. How, how's it worked for you both? You can talk about both. But I'm curious about the virtual piece when you were um, shaking your head. So I agree having, you know, having your camera off and, um, and just being quiet. The, the other thing, I don't know if we've talked about this. I don't think we have yet. We've done some um, where we actually have the therapist videotape a session oh. and then we can go and observe that videotape. And that is very similar to doing it virtually, but being tuned out mm -hmm. because you, you're not, you're, you're not even involved in, in the equation at all. Mm -hmm. So you have, you can take as much time as you need to review the session. I, um, I did one of these and I just kept, you know, going backwards and like writing specific instances down so that I could give some very specific feedback, which was really, really helpful. Um, I will say the in-person ones, one of the things that I run into and, and like Kim said, you know, we're always available to help and offer suggestions. I feel like that can sometimes change the dynamic of why we're there. Um, and that's why I kind of like the virtual better because really? when you're in person, you are a physical body in their mm -hmm. home and you are a physical body that both the family and the therapist can ask you questions. So then it might change the focus of what the actual visit is. Is this visit a mentor visit and, and we're all here to offer suggestions or is this visit specifically for fidelity observing? So it's, you know, you don't wanna ever take away from helping a coworker and giving suggestions, but it does change the effect of, of that meeting a little bit. Yeah, I think it you, it can't help it. No matter how much you try to blend into the background, you're a new person, probably a new person there, unless you're also involved with the family. But I can see how that could change the dynamic. I think about that when we've tried to videotape intervention visits. Just the presence of the camera in any yeah. form is going to change a little bit of what's happening. So I like your idea of video, having the providers videotape the visit to provide to you. That's a really cool strategy to probably get as close to a natural observation without the disruption of um, the presence that, as you could get. Go ahead, Lisa. I love that idea of um, the observing videotaping, even in the future after we're out of the pandemic, uh, because like everyone is talking about, it completely changes dyna dynamics. Even if I'm trying to be as invisible as possible, usually at the end of the visit, when the therapist is wrapping up, maybe writing their note, the family will always talk to me about how wonderful <laughs> they uh, feel about their provider and just um, tell me examples of what they've helped them with, uh, which is great and nice to hear, but it does um, change what you would normally be doing with the family, because maybe if you're writing the note, if the therapist is writing the note, they might be talking about that joint plan with the family too. So it does take a little bit away from um, the visit, uh, even if you're trying to not um, do that at all. Yeah, you know, and I think one of the benefits of that videotaping, I mean, it's so easy in Zoom, you just click record. I, I would assume yeah. mm -hmm. similar in Microsoft Teams and the other platforms. But then you also have that clip to compare across time. Like how cool mm -hmm. as a supervisor yeah. or a peer to go, Look at where you've grown from the last, you know, six months when we did this before or whatever the time frame is. Sometimes it's, I think there's nothing, there's nothing also like watching yourself. So for somebody to do their self-assessment, 
on the, you know, seeing themselves, you sometimes see things you wish you hadn't done, but you might also <laughs> see, wow, I actually didn't think I was giving a lot of feedback, but I am because I can watch myself. So there's a lot of benefits to that strategy too. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa.